As Pan-African nationalists, we don't take issue with the basic premise of socialism, excuse me, right, with the basic premise of socialism that capitalism is a problem and that the private ownership of the means of production is one of the biggest causes of poverty and dysfunction in this world. We agree. The problem is they stop short of a racial consciousness that shows the role that white supremacy, Chinese imperialism plays in that capitalism. And so for us, the issue with the black socialists is they refuse to see the role of race. W.E.B. Du Bois, George Padmore, and other black socialists who joined the Communist Party, Socialist International, most of them quit. They got frustrated with the fact that the common term and these other socialist white organizations were still racist. So what Marcus Garvey said, they had to learn it for themselves, that no economic system is going to displace race. They still expect to rule over us. So we don't reject the philosophy. We reject the fact that it stops short of a thorough racial analysis. During the time of Garvey, many of the black socialists at that time tried to infiltrate and take over the Garvey movement. And he successfully debated a lot of them on socialism versus nationalism, and he won every time. Because although the economic analysis was accurate, the racial analysis was lacking. A white communist, a white socialist, is still a white supremacist. And so that's the only difference we would make there. Economic Pan-Africanism. Pan-Africanism, I would say, in the past 30 years or so, has been more rhetorical than practical. It has been more ideological than developmental. And I think there's different reasons for that. On the American side, after the Honorable Marcus Garvey was deported in 1927, in no small part due to the shenanigans of W.E.B. Du Bois and other jealous black leaders, Pan-Africanism took a downturn. Because most of the post-Garvey leaders in America